Pat, we were just talking about a Wall Street Journal article and, of course, Investor News headlined yesterday with China to seal its rare earth brain trust as the West scrambles for expertise. So the obvious question is, how is UCOR dealing with this? Yeah, that was an interesting move, wasn't it? We, I guess, not unexpected. Back in 23, they uh, were banning technology uh, being exported from, from China. And then most recently, the Wall Street Journal, as you indicated, uh, presented that they were not allowing uh, experts to uh, travel. They were taking names and, and collecting passport information and, and not allowing any of that expertise to, to filter out. But um, we're ahead of that game. We, uh, we started to think about this quite a number of uh, months ago, obviously. Uh, we hired a good operational person that's worked in the uh, rare earth industry processing with rare earth uh, you know, um, refining. And that operational person got hired in the last 60 days. From a technology standpoint, we've uh, you know got the people at Kingston Process Metallurgy and MechChem out of New England, along with our UCOR team. But we found a very good um, SS expert, PhD in nature, that's going to head up our technology uh, deployment. Um, they've been hired uh, most recently as well and joined the team in the last uh, two weeks, actually. Uh, we'll have a more formal announcement uh, forthcoming. Um, we also um, realize that, you know, once you've got your technology, you're looking to deploy it, you've got to uh, have project management. It's a real multifunctional approach. You've got to have operational, so you, operational, you've got to have technology, you've got to have project management. And from a project management standpoint, just recently, um, uh, last week, well, in at the REI, REIA show in Montreal, we um, uh, hired uh, for the third interview, someone that we're going to bring on as our project manager, we actually built an SX plant, both heavy and light, and um, we um, love their love the person's credentials, and they'll be joining the team very shortly as well. So we've got a very well-rounded out team. That to your point, you've you've got to have the team players. Um, you know, there are companies out there that say, "Well, we have lots of capital." Well, the capital is not going to get you anything unless you have the people with the expertise, and we feel that we've done that now with uh, with Ucor. We've got the well-rounded cross-functional team, which I've had a career in the automotive industry, as you know, and that's how we build out designs with cross-functional teams, and then we build out commercial deployment with cross-functional teams. And we've, we've got those pieces together now. Well, that's not the only piece that you guys have put together. Recently, it seems like a series of financing uh, successes. Where do we want to start with that and updating everybody? Well, the, uh, you know, the DOD, and, and um, as I mentioned most recently, the, DO, the US government's not really writing checks at this point for rare earth processing, but for UCOR, a Canadian company, they are. Uh, grant money. We had a $4 million OTA, as everyone's aware, other transaction agreement that was in place a couple of years ago. That was to run many hours on our technology compared to conventional solvent extraction. The US DOD really liked what they saw um, back in, uh, in May during the CMI event in Toronto. Uh, we announced that they had put another 18.4 million US on top of the 4 million OTA. That's about 38 million Canadians it's been added to the um, the mix from the DOD. And again, they're not writing checks except for technologies and pass forward, paths forward that they like. And that's that's UCOR. We then leverage that DOD news to say, well, let's let's get to the market now before the summer um, the season drags on. Let's move in the market now before the uncertainty of, of uh, you know, Middle Eastern wars, uh, investor uh, confidence perhaps waning because of uh, uh, China on again, off again. Uh, let, let's let's go to Raymond James, Red Cloud, and let's uh, put another good lot of money in the bank. And we did that with a $15.5 million raise. So we have over $50 million now to execute our plan going forward. And it's just been a real smart capital plan by the team. Now we're cashed up. We can look at strategic equity only going forward. And... Um, we're in a space where, you know, capital is hard to come by and we've got it. And of course, for all of our American investors out there who go to Investor News, I just want to point out that you're kind of evolving into an American company with your processing facility being in Louisiana. Would you like to provide an American side update? Yeah, you know, we're definitely um, an American story. Um, we, um, you know, we, we, as you know, we had... Uh, I decided a couple of years ago we were going to set our first strategic metals complex up in the U.S. We looked along the Gulf Coast and uh, we ended up in Louisiana, central Louisiana. Uh, we have a building there that's an 80,800 square foot uh, facility. It's right in the center of the state. It's away from the weather patterns, but in a very good traffic zone. It's got good freight in, good freight out, and a chemical industry that's very strong, good workforce. 
good uh, power um, uh, metrics that allow us to build out our plant and um, we'll be in production by the first half of 2026 um, with a uh, phased build out of our scalable modular technology but now that we've got the DoD behind us and uh, our most recent raise from strategic investors mostly institutional now at this point uh, we're looking to uh, to build out that first phase in Louisiana and it is very much an American um, US-based story because critical rarists are needed. And as you know, Tracy, that uh, facility in Louisiana happens to be in a foreign trade zone, which means uh, it's one of a handful of areas in the US where you can actually bring critical raw material inputs from outside of the US, process them in the US, and then turn them into um, a downstream shipped uh, product into metal alloy magnets and whatnot. So if our inputs are coming from Brazil, for example, there's no tariff consequence during the current uh, tariff wars that are uh, up and going and uh, hopefully we can process most effectively in Louisiana and start to build back that supply chain security for uh, national reasons uh, for the U.S. and for emerging industries for the Western world. And of course, in Canada as well, you're testing your feedstock, correct? In Windsor, can you give us an update on that? Yeah, we're in Kingston, Ontario at, with Kingston Process Metallurgy and uh, yeah, we're uh, that's where we test all the feedstock. It's where we've been testing the technology. We've got over 5,000 hours run on our commercial demo plant in Kingston. And uh, we actually just, uh, with this most recent raise, we doubled the size of that, doubled the size of that commercial uh, facility simply because we want to continue with the engineering development as we deploy uh, commercialization in Louisiana. And uh, we're also looking at particular, uh, some oddball ones like samarium gadolinium that are part of seven reefs that China has really banned. Samarium is used in samarium cobalt magnets. We feel we can process some of that right in Kingston, uh, Ontario, Canada. For everybody who's out there watching UCOR is or is now interested in UCOR, I recommend you go to their incredible website. You have one of the best websites actually in the entire industry for information and education. So what should shareholders be looking forward to in the next quarter, short term? Uh, short term in the next quarter, you'll, you'll hear a lot about our engineering um, uh, deployment plan for Louisiana. Uh, you'll also hear about some of the feedstock arrangements that are being worked on uh, in South America, Australia, and how they'll uh, be part of our plan going forward. And potentially, uh, you'll hear about some of the offtake uh, arrangements that are have been in discussion for quite some time. We had uh, 29 visitors come to our Kingston plant in 2024, and part of that group was uh, an offtake group. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very key that going, going forward, you don't just have one-off transactional relationships that... Uh, don't do a whole lot for building out the complete supply chain. You've got to have three and four prong partnerships and that's what UCOR is working on. You'll hear about those complete solutions from here's the feedstock, here's how we're processing, here's what we're processing, here's the tonnage, here's the CapEx plan, here's the revenue plan, here's the metal alloy maker that will convert that into something usable for the magnet maker or even not a magnet maker. We have a number of uh, offtake partners now that are looking at us and, and actually not wanting it for magnets, but for other uses of rare earth. Thank you so much for joining us, Pat. I know you're incredibly busy. We want to uh, wish you ongoing success and uh, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks very much.